Great. So today I'm going to look at the preparation of financial statements. That's today's section. So we got it from the IAS word one. That's the preparation of financial statements. Preparation of financial statements. Or preparation and presentation of what financial statement. How do you go by preparation of financial statement? Good. So that's the agenda for the day. Preparation and presentation of financial statements. If you should not prepare a basic set of financial statements with regards to the regulations and then the other relevant laws, including the higher priorities. Now, let's see. For the financial statement they are going to prepare, we have the source of legal laws and then the regulatory framework. So we write two of them. Now if you take Ghana, for instance, Ghana, the company's code, the company's act mandates all limited liability companies or all companies to prepare a set of financial statements at least annually. Good. So we look at the companies. Act or code. Act words twenty word nineteen. Act nine nine two. Act nine nine two. So this gives us how the account mandates us to prepare the financial statement. So in exams, if you examiner take it this way. Prepare the set of financial statements in accordance with the company's acts. That's what we are referring to. So what I'm going to prepare is in accordance with what the company's acts. The company's acts actually has to prepare the financial statements. Good. Then the IFRSs also will tell us how we should prepare the financial statements. So these are the two sorts of issues that we have to be aware of. So the company's code will tell you the set of accounts you should prepare. Then the IFRS will also tell you how to prepare them. How we get it? Good. So in exams, the examiner will just make things look a bit abstract for you. Prepare the financial statement suitable for publication in accordance with what the company's acts and the IFRS. When students see something like this, a third examiner is looking for different things from what they know. No, it's still the same. So what I want to do is coming from these two items. The relevant IFRS, that guy is a preparation, is the IAS one. So IAS one, together with the company's code, give a presentational format on how the financial statement must be prepared. That's all. So basically, that is it. So when your examiners are quoting the company's code or the IFRS, you don't need to worry. They're just reminding you about that. It does not call for any special treatment. It's the only one now you need. Good. Now let's see. A complete set of financial statements must comprise of the following. So component of financial statement. Component. And this component definitely are going to prepare one in exams. At least one of them will be there. You will see one life and garlic. Good. So you should know how to prepare each of the components very well. Ah. So the component of a complete set of financial statements. So component of the financial statement, please not your capital. So set number one is a comprehensive income or the statement of profits or loss and other comprehensive income. 
are the confident loss statements. All of them mean the same thing. Good. So statements, but let me profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So other comprehensive income. Comprehensive income. Or you can just call it comprehensive income. That is it. You can just call it comprehensive income. Or just profit or loss. You are done. That is the first set or the first sub financial statement. Good. Now, the next one talks about a statement of changes in equity. All of them comes with statements. All of them start with statement, statement. So statement of what changes in equity. Finally, our last but one, statement of financial position. That's the balance sheet. Well, you know, as balance sheet. Then the fourth one is statement of cash flow. Statement of what? Cash flow. Then the final one is note to the financial statement. Notes. Notes to the financial statement. So the note to the financial statement, good. Great, so that is the a complete set. So at least 20 marker of your exam or 20 marks of your questions should come from this angle. Now this is a section. The first three form one, it can be one set for 20 marks. And then this also, on it also on it on for 20 marks. In each case, it comes with a note. So let's start. Profit and loss. Just explain your performance. The performance of the organization is measured in terms of your profit or loss. Changes in equity just uh, represent the effects of the transaction and event on equity or the owner's capital. How does it behave to the transactions occurred? Then the financial position, as usual, balance sheet. It just is a sheet that contains all your balances that you have, all your closing balances. That's all. It just assess your assets, your equity, and liability. The cash flow, cash movement. Now the not to account, they are the specific accounting policy, disclosures, notes and how some of the figures in the financial statements are arrived at. So that's a note to the financial statement. They are what? Accounting policies. They are accounting estimates. They are sometimes workings. How you arrive at some of the figures in the financial statement. But for the purpose of examination, we are not going to state accounting policy, except for PSA examiners. They can sometimes ask you. Good. For the purpose of examination, the notes are your workings clearly stated. We mark it for you. Each of them move with the workings. So if the first three there go to the workings, the last one also come move the workings. So definitely this you're going to answer one. Yes. So that is it. So this is the game. Today and Wednesday, we are finishing the first three. And then next week to Monday and then Wednesday, we are finishing cash flow. So two weeks out of us, we are done with this section. <laughs> that is it. And it's a target, it's a standard. So basically that is it. So I'm going to run through the formats. And this format you're already aware of. So you have to explain certain issues, certain presentational sections, and then 
that's all. We'll pick our first question and then we'll do justice to it. Our first question may use the last settings on to do the illustration. Good. So basically, that is it. So I'll explain the format of the profit and loss and other comprehensive income. Good. So now let's start again. So we are picking the profit and loss and then study the format. I will, I will do that for only profit and loss. For just negative balance sheet, I don't do the format. That one is in the handout, so we can go to it. First, the three protocols. So you have to adhere to the three protocols. First, the name of the company. So Saman Limited. Yes. Iodine. Work hard. Impuntio. Success. Ajunajuni. Suffer to gain. Yes. Iodine. Ewawa. Ebaini. Yes, so that's the name. Whichever name they don't know, it is right, it's right. So, name of the company. So, say the name of the company. So, let me use Samampa or Sana. Sana Limited. That's 2006 question. So, Samampa Limited. Samampa Limited. And line it nicely. There you come. Solution to every question is the question itself, not what you know, not at all. Now go to the requirement. If the examiner state could try profit and loss and other compensative income, just copy it. Profit and loss and other compensative income. If they say compensative income, just write it on compensative income. How do you get it? So how they state? How it was stated in the question. So let us assume that you are going to prepare a statement of comprehensive income. That's a short version. Comprehensive income. Here yeah, is for the year ended. So for the entire year. So for the year ended, then it is now. So for the year ended, maybe 31st December. 2019. Three protocols. The third one is your currency, the reporting currency. And definitely to be in series for you. If they don't have three traders, don't forget to raise the traders. If you have any traders, don't want yourself to raise it. Good. So these are the three protocols. They go to the format. Now, here yeah, you have to start with your direct trading. We sit from your direct trading, that's the sales. So we your sales revenue. So let me add it here, sales revenue. Or it's also called net sales or turnover. Turnover. So much. And do we need a trial balance? Always check the first footnote and last footnote if the sales revenue. It's free. That's a clue. Good. Usually, the note that affects sales revenue are the very first one. Or oh, if I don't want certain, I'll put it at last. Yes. By the time you finish everything, the sales revenue is wrong. And if sales revenue is wrong, forget it. Good. Okay. Hmm. But all your profits, whatever profit you get, because profit of getting profits. So from there, you go to the cost of sales. You go to cost of sales. Cost of sales. We'll look at this into detail after the format. Now, this is a direct revenue versus direct expense. So the, those are the man accounting. So direct, direct, that's what we call the trading section. 
These are the trimming section. And then from here going to the post tunnel section. So we will call it what the accountant call it gross profits with the same as what direct word profits. <laughs> then you relax for a while, you come back again. Yeah. Now this is what's supposed to do. Supposed to put admin here, admin costs, and then so admin and then general general expenses. So much. Admin it all. So don't write it now. I think this one right. And then you go to selling and distribution expenses. Selling and what? Distribution expenses. This is what you're supposed to do. Exactly. All the expenses they've given you, those you arrange it into the operating section, arrange into three. Some admin, selling, and then cost of sales. This one, sometimes they are clear. But how to apportion some of the expenses between admin and selling can sometimes become a topical issue. So assuming that you did in exams, you tried, you alone know. You tried, and then you had um, 40, 30. So the total, for the total operating expenses giving us what, 70, right? No, in actual fact, it's supposed to be 50, 20. Hmm. It seems that some of the expenses we thought is sell and distribution, 10 of them, 12 sell and distribution, is supposed to be what admin. So because you mix it up, it also change the final answer for what admin and general expenses and then sell and distribution. Not that you don't know, you know. Then I see something like this, it really pain us. So what do we do? Then we can take insurance, comprehensive one, to cover us. Then what you have to do is, once you can get the total correct, don't worry. Go to the the workings and sum all the expenses together and bring their financial here as what 70 and refer the examiner. He will go there to mark it for you and bring it here and come mark it for you. Even though you don't know how to even whether one will be admin or distribution. In reality, this is what supposed to do. We'll do them to admin and sell distribution cost. In fact, so yes, that when I compound the draft balance, we are not there. Some of the expenses we just need the rent. Whether it was general admin rent or distribution. Good. So we have to apportion it between admin and distribution. But if those apportionment have not been done well, you have to go by this approach. So in short, you will take compensatory insurance, just sum them up, do one workings, add all the operating costs together. Either you call it admin. Good general and distribution cost so much one way thing. if save yourself or you can also call it what operating cost operating cost that's all you are done so instead of you breaking the two don't worry just sum them up add all any other expenses together and then you are done but if it's a bit clear no confusion you can break it where the demarcation is a bit difficult, don't worry yourself. Put them together like this. Exams, you are using what? Travis, right? Exactly. In reality, we have what? The whole year to prepare the financial statement there, yeah? or even one month to prepare the financial statement. So that is it. And not all information are available in the exam question. So you have to move faster. Good. So basically, that is it. So either admin, general, and distribution expenses, merge them. If the demarcation or the separation is a bit difficult, just merge them. Good. Now let's continue again. So after lessing the operating cost or admin or general expenses from it, get something like the name is what? Operating profit. I agree. Operating profit. Then you add the other income to it. Other income. So other income, so much. Now, what are the other income? Examples of other income. This is direct trading 
or direct revenue? This is indirect revenue. Other income refers to the type of income that you earn it outside your ordinary course of business. You register your business to buy and sell, let's say, tomato. Any income coming aside from sales of tomato can be as well other income. So other income refers to one, investment income. One, investment income. So examples of other income, they are investment income. So investment income. Two, interest or dividend received. Three, profit on disposal. Four, rental income. Five, fair value gain on investment property. Fair value gain on what? Investment property. And then six. 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 Six is fair value gain on financial assets. Fair value through profit and loss. So fair value gain on financial assets. Thank God we done financial assets, right? Especially the equity instrument. If there's any fair value gain, and if you fair value through profit and loss, the gain or loss must be part of the profit and loss. If it is again, you add it to other income. So it's bracket fair value through. PNL. So these are some of the few examples of what investment income. It is not compulsory for example not to give you all these 61 questions, not at all. At least one or two of them should not appear. Good. The section was a way to key this section, but they are not difficult. The last two. Okay, so that's the other income. So you add the other income. Then after adding the other income, you get what you call profit before interest and tax. So profit before interest and tax. So profit before interest and tax. Profit before interest and tax. Good. Profit before interest and tax. Now let me ask this. As you are going to Kaswa, you don't know Kaswa. Good. As you are going to Kaswa, and I, I said that you are before Odoko and Malam Junction. What will be your next destination? How are you now? And what will be your next destination? And and Malam Junction. They are going to Kasua. If you are before Doko and Malam Junction, where are you? <laughs> yes. If you are going to Kasua and you are before Doko, in fact, your next destination is what? Doko. You say you are first, like, hmm. Do you know the route? <laughs> what if you don't know the route? Okay, let's assume that you are going to. That means I can't assume this what I did. <laughs> let's assume that you are going to the winner. Yes. And now you are before Tobut and Tema. What's your next destination? Exactly. So now they can't tell that you'll be around, let's say. A shaman or no, but you don't know that, right? Good. So that is it. So now this profit is before other call and Kaswa. What will be the next item, the next junction, other call? So that's interest, right? 
there is profit before interest and tax. The next item has got interest. So next interest. And the interest has a very nice name. That we call it. We call it what? Finance cost. Finance cost. And here, I'll list all of them for you. Will I add or subtract? Good. That's a technique. Okay, now let's continue the game. Now, you've passed the call. Where are you now? Don't tell the answer. Come on. <laughs> Why are you now? You pass the doctor. Where's the next destination? Thank you. That's Nala. So that is what profit before what? before tax because you are before Malan Janshi. Right after the call, you are before what? Malan Janshi. Good. So profit before tax. Profit before tax. So profit before tax. So profit before tax will be here so much. Now let me continue from this section. Eh? So let me continue from this section. Good. The profit before tax. So continue from this section. Now, income tax expense. So income tax expense. So much. You take it off. So now, if pass through Malam Junction, so where are you now? Mm. You pass through Malam Junction, right? You know, meaning you after Malam Junction, right? So that's profit towards after tax, and then you're going towards the castle. That's the profit for the year. I'll be getting it. good. So we call it profit after tax, or I call it anti part profits after tax no shortcut in it um, please take note no shortcuts i also call it profit for the year or the net profits but we mostly like the profits after tax or the profit for the year Good. then you relax for a while for the profit and loss you are done that's the end of the profit and loss but there's other comprehensive income and now you start with your the other comprehensive income. So officially, profit and loss and profit after tax. That is it. All what they're going to do is not part of profit and loss. So when they say that treat something profit and loss, it will end up profit after tax. All what they're going to do, it will appear on the balance sheet again. It will appear in change negative. We call it other comprehensive income. Oh, see, I know shortcut. Please write me for my space here. Yes, write it before. Other comprehensive income, OCI. Now, what's the difference between other comprehensive income and the other income? Difference between other comprehensive income and other income. Or they are the same. What's the difference? Don't tell me that one is uh, comprehensive. When there's no comprehension. Yes, that's how I said it first. This one have comprehensive there. If I clean this comprehensive from there, other income, other income, they are the same now, right? Good. So it's the word comprehensive. Now, sometimes some of the other income, they are not realized or they are alternative or notional, abstract, in air, sitting somewhere. Like, for instance, the revaluation game that we did, you have a building. The value is, let's say, book value. It's 400 million US dollars. And then the market value is going for 450. Will it be revaluation gain or loss? Are you getting or you are losing? You are 
You are gaining or losing? Gaining or losing? Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. Yes. Good. So there's a gain of 50. I'll take that. Now, if I'm losing gain of 50, I'm not giving you the money. I will the MTN, they are MTN more money. The first advert that they did. Ah, that's the kind of way. I remember that, that advert, right? Good. So you've earned 50 on your building. Now, where is the money? Is it realized? Is anybody probably transferring 50 million dollars to your account? Not at all. Not even a promise that in future they'll pay to you. So some of the gains are not realized. They are comprehensive. So let's gather all the other gains and call them what? Other comprehensive income. Such income, they are not realized. So example of OCI are uh, one, revaluation gain, or uh, revaluation surplus. So revaluation gain. Yeah, right gain or loss, because sometimes it's a reverser. You know that loss is supposed to be in the profit and loss. All evaluation loss must be what? Reflected in the profit and loss. This loss over here, I'm referring to the reverser. The reverser. The evaluation gain or loss. Yeah, right. Nice. Nicely. So basically, that is it. Then you can also talk about financial instrument fair value through OCI. So fair value gain on financial instrument which pass through OCI or head for sale. Fair value gain on head for sale financial instrument. For that one, fair value gain must be reported in where? The OCI, other comprehensive income. Good. So fair value gain on held for sale financial instrument. Held for sale financial instrument. So the financial instrument that we did, I'm making it here. For information, please, if you have not gone through the last session, I think I uploaded this morning. When? No, yesterday. So kindly go through the latter part of the financial instrument to complete it. And then we will meet for a question solving on all of them. Good. Okay. So putting all these together, then we have what you call total comprehensive income. So all the comprehensive income here, we can just add this together, this is the total comprehensive, just the other comprehensive income. And then we add this, adding this and this together, we get this, then finally add this and this together, and then get overall total. But if you don't want trouble, if you don't want trouble, just sum everything together. So one, two, three, time is not there. So put everything together like this. Then you are done. Then call it your total comprehensive income. Total comprehensive income for the year, and then you are done. So that's the end of the format. Please, let me repeat this one again. We are begging you. We use God begging. This format, they spend energy, time, and then other resources, including what intellectual property. So even if I exams, it's difficult. We shouldn't try to massage the format. Change it. Why our exam difficult or we are not seeing top low? No. So that is it. So let's see. Now the format I in the handouts for that of the change in equity and then financial position. I know do that. So it's come true. Good. And that's the first video that I put on the platform. I did everything. I explained all the formats. For that of profit and loss, change in equity, and then the equity. Good. And then you'll be fine. Now, let me explain the items in the financial system, one after the other, especially sales. Now, when you mention sales, 
it must comprise of what you do in your sales revenue for the, uh, the year. No sales for two years, no sales for three years. Sales revenue for that particular year. Because it's a profit and loss for the year ended, so sales for this year, 2019. It must exclude sales previous year and the year side of you know, no and those stuff to it. I'll be getting to it. Except for we've done event after reporting period, right? Good. So if it costs for adjusting, then you can adjust it. This all the items in the profit and loss, both revenue and that of expenses, there must be net of tax VAT, for instance. There must be what net of VAT. If there's any withholding tax, it goes to tax, but here we are not doing taxation, so put withholding tax aside. Then you come to VAT. Your examiner assumes that. You have done VAT in financial accounting. Yes, you've done it in financial accounting. VAT. So if the sales given to you the trial balance, it includes VAT. Don't worry. Just calculate the VAT component and take it off. You are calculating profit and loss for the company, not for the government. VAT is not for the government, it's not for the company, it's for the government. Just like you took it on behalf of the government. So account for it separately. It should not be part of your performance. So if you go and meet tough examiner, can make this look horrible or so easy for you. Include VAT in some of the transactions that this sales is included with or the VAT, or maybe the purchases or the cost of sales include VAT. You have to take all those stuff out. So that is the sales. And please, all the items must be aligned items. And this is the format that we want. It must be aligned items, which means that at the end of the day, if I went by this approach, you should have about 13 items in your PL. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, so maybe it's only one. So 13. So on average, you have only 13 items. If I see more than like 13 to 20, you mind. Yes. You shouldn't do any workings here. The only workings that are permitted, op open your brackets, add and subtract, put it there as line item. You can say, okay, sales, now I come down, less VAT. No, we don't do that. In fact, in reality, you're not even allowed to open your brackets and do it this way. If you see audited accounts or financial statements of a company and they are performing work since I want to confuse you. Why is that in the end? So that you only permit it for examination purposes of time. You only permit it to open a bracket like this. But going down, because each and every item must be presented on what? As a line item, one line, one line. So if I see two lines or three lines off track, I'll be get it. Any workings, go and do it and run it. But you can do something like this. Maybe the sales want to perform some workings. It will not go here. And don't you going to do work case too. Look at it. What you have to do. Just come to the next line. Open your bracket like this. Sales. Oh, it was 90,000 on the face. Plus 2,000 that I forgot to add. Less 1,000 that if add wrongly. Then I'll put that sign with sales. I'm done. I'll be getting it. This is allowed. But you come to do something like this. It's what we don't want to see. You write sales here and come right plus um, 90,000 plus what they left. And then as if you are running a workings on sales, I'll be getting it. Uh -huh. So the workings must be done separately and then make the answer in. So basically, that is the item that we are looking for. So let me bring cost of sales back. So that's the first item. So I'll take my time and explain each of the item one after the other. So I'm done with sales. Now sales is being governed by IFRS 15. Revenue. IFRS 15. Hoping that one of the weekends we'll meet and then try from the way. So that is it. Now, cost of sales. Let's 
show you cost of sales. How I want to calculate cost of sales first. Two things will happen. Either the examiner will give you cost of sales on a trial balance, or they will not do that. You will see purchases on a trial balance. Good. Let's see. All the same, cost of sales made up of the following. So, working is cost of sales working. First, your open inventory. So much. Add your purchases to it. So much. In fact, purchases or production. I think one of the settings. I saw that I'm not doing something good there. I didn't give them production. So today they're looking for that, they can't find it. They give purchase, they can't find it. They give them production. You've seen it, right? Exactly. Good. So take notes because a manufacturer will produce and a trading company do, will do what? Will go and buy. So that's purchases. Good. And then school will do what? Yes. If a manufacturer produces and a, a trading company will buy and sell, go and buy the product and come and sell for it. don't want to produce. And then educational center will do what? Thank you. So they are honest with the receipts. Good. Then let's close in inventory. Now this closing inventory, take notes of the valuation. Inventory must measure that what? Law of what? Cost and what? The NLV. And here definitely they will do that. Now if we get this one, this is the cost of sales, but it's incomplete plus other direct cost and adjustment. If we see cost of sales in the trial balance, this is how they arrive at the cost of sales in the trial balance. And then in the trial balance, if we see cost of sales in the trial balance, the inventory figure, whether stated or not, is closing inventory. If we see cost of sales on the trial balance, the inventory figure there, whether they tell you or not, is what closing inventory. If you see purchases in a trial balance, the inventory figure, whether they tell you or not, is what? Open inventory. These are the trends that they move together. Good. So that is it. Now, when you get this, then you add other direct cost to it. So add what? Under direct cost. Because here we are using the absorption, the absorption and the other direct cost so under direct cost that's a direct fish cost it can be wages flowing adjustment so one one of the other costs can be wages on its own so much two you can have adjustments inventory written down that's adjustment inventory written down that's if this is given to you in a trial balance, the cost of sales is given to you in a trial balance. But if you do have the purchases, you have to calculate the cost of sales yourself. You can use the right closing inventory figure. You don't need to adjust it again. The inventory written down will not come. Good. So inventory written down, so much you add. And then finally, depreciation and errors. Here, the depreciation, the asset that they use in production, the depreciation must be formed part of what cost of sales. Good. But sometimes we are not there. So we can assume that plant to be part of the production world machine. So depreciation of plant must go to where cost of sales. Good. So that is it. Or sometimes a good examiner will tell you that all depreciation is charged to what cost of sales. You have to charge to what cost of sales right then. So that's depreciation. Then finally, errors. So you can also have errors. Errors. This one is a mistake. Intentionally or unintentionally charging wrong items to what? Wrong items to the cost of sales. If added or subtracted something wrongly, from the cost of sales. So when they inform you, 
kindly reverse it and turn to the right side. So they were told, okay, they sold one of their motor vehicle and they had a proceed of 5,000 and they've credited it to the cost of sales. What do you do? It's totally wrong. So I'll take it from cost of sales, they've credited so our debit cost of sales back, you reverse it and send it to where it's supposed to be, you are done. That is the cost of sales. Now, other costs may include um, provision for plants. Yes, yeah, so adding depreciation on plants. Or oh, the examiner can tell us all depreciation in charge to cost of sales. Then you add it to it. Else you can add or you can subtract, depending on what they did for you. If they have wrongly added, what do you do? You subtract. If they have wrongly subtracted, you add back in that order. In all okay, they'll tell you what they've done first. So they, they might not inform you straightforward. The cost of sales include a sales proceed of 3,000 cities. The cost of sales has been debited with the proceeds of purchases, proceed of sale of non current asset of 5,000. What do you do? It has been debited, meaning they've added, it has been included. So, what do you do? I'll credit it. That's all. Good. And then sometimes repairs, provision for repairs and warranty can also form part of what the cost of sales. Warranty or provision must be part of what cost of sales. But when you sell goods, IS 30 what 37, and make provision for any repairs after sales services, such provisions must be debited to cost of sales. Good. So that is it. Now that's the end of the cost of sales. So I may take in the item one after the other. From there, we just pick one focus question. We do just three. Yeah, then. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It becomes an income balance. Yes, balance. Okay. In a trial balance, if you see purchases in a trial balance, the inventory figure is open. So that you pick it, add it to the purchases. Then the closing event will be given to you in the footnotes. Go and search for it and bring it. Good. So basically, that is it. Good. In fact, last thing, history repeated itself. So they had a redraft, which occurred in November 2017. So they okay, last thing. So I was in the cycle has ended. Yes, yeah, so they are going to start the new cycle on you. And that cycle will be, hmm, I would say from now. I'm safe for now. You said after the <laughs> Good. Procedural redraft is the last section. For three consecutive times, you might be changing the staff in that order. Okay, now from cost of sales, gross profit. I don't need to talk about gross profit. I've talked about these two guys already. And then come have talk about it. Now, finance costs, let me list finance costs also here. Very important. Then we start the first game. Finance costs. Finance costs. Now, when you talk about finance costs, finance costs include what? All costs that you incur in connection of what? Going of funds. That's all. So here, 
I don't think going cost here. I think it's correct. I know it. So your finance costs include the following. Finance costs include the following. One, interest on loans. It means short term, long term, or even overdraft. All of them form part of what? Finance cost or debenture. And don't forget about financial liability, financial instruments. So the finance cost on financial instruments. So finance cost. That's the effective interest rate section of the amortization of financial instruments normally comes to the PNL. So finance cost on the financial liability financial liability that's the effective interest rate what we did on last wednesday good three dividend paid on redeemable preference shares so dividend paid or dividend just dividend on redeemable preference shares is also form part of what finance costs because the same day on the same day we said that on the same day we said that good that's great now we said that with any dividend that you paid on the regional preferences, it must be classified as what as a finance charge. Now, with your preferences, they are they are liability. We look at it last Wednesday that we call a special case of what preferences. If it's redeemable, it must be classified as liability. Good four. Unwinding of discount, they also finance cost. Unwinding of what of discount. If you look at this and IA 16 PP, we did that. You are going to see some again. On um IFRS 10 consultation. So when I reach there, and you'll be fine. Console woman, you'll be fine. Good, consultation. So one of discounts. I'll also be part of what the finance cost. So basically, these are the examples of finance costs. It also includes bank interest, bank what interest. That is the finance cost. Bank interest. Bank interest. Good. So that's the examples of finance cost. So basically. That is it. Level one, let me add one to it. The finance costs on on leases. Finance cost on what? On lease. So, so part of finance cost on lease. On lease. IFRS 16 is also an example of what finance cost. So basically, these are the examples of finance costs. So in the exams, out of these six or five, definitely you meet two or at least one of these in exams. If it's consolidation, oh, then a wind of discounts, you meet it. If it's consolidation, a wind of discount. That's why I want you to worry in consolidation. I understand. So basically, that is it. Finance cost on lease. If not done lease, I have a sixteen. Definitely with place to get it up to full section. Good. Now I'm done with all. For the other comprehensive income, we are done with everything in the revaluation game. Study it. All levels, you have to back with what with questions.
Now, we are now starting the financial reporting. So I'll walk you through what you should know an exam condition. If you pick any exams, if you pick any questions in exams, first, please go through this for me and it'll be fine. Yes. Some of you are new to it. Yes. So I have to introduce you right after this. We start our first question and then we will solve it. I have a nice approach or a nice principle called rats or rough. That rat or rough. Fred is saying that before you solve any question, please read the requirement first. The requirement. Don't start work because you've seen trial balance there. They're going to pay financial statements. Not at all. Don't do so. Maybe it was for different things. So don't do Read the requirement first. Then you be scared of the travel and go to the requirements first. Why do you why do you need the requirement first? First, what is telling you that to stimulate yourself or your appetite? You have to read the requirement actually. Okay, for profit and loss, I need my sales, I need this, I need that. So just remind you. And then second, to avoid what period of time or to prevent allergic situation. Some students are allergic to some question. I mean, this question, I'll never answer it. Don't even read, bother yourself to read the, the whole story. Just go to the comment. If it's the one you're going to answer, then you move on. Or the one that you have to answer, then you answer it. So that examination time, there's no time for thinking. No thinking time. We have only reading time and what working time. Right from the requirement, relax for a while. Maybe one second, come back again. Come and read the additional information. Please, here, I put a strong warning. Until all the footnotes been read at least two times, no figure to enter the financial statement. Good. So that is it. Read it two times. Read it two times. Read it two times. First, very fast. Second, we are now solving it. If you don't read all the footnotes and you start working, the figure in the travel under you thought it might be free, it's not free, you to touch the footnotes. And I'm the one doing the question. My last footnote will affect sales revenue. My last footnote will affect the cost of sales. Yes. So that by the time you finish everything and read the last footnote, your cost of sales or sales is wrong and it's follow you. Good. If you cancel two times, also not there. So now I don't know what to do. If you cancel, time is not there. If you leave it, you are wrong. What do you do? Then, so to avoid these issues, can you read the, all the footnotes two times before you start the work? Then, after the footnotes, you go to the trial balance. Yeah. Fred is saying that scan to the trial balance or the financial statement. If you are doing cash flow, they'll give you financial statements. So that becomes rough. But, that is saying that scan to the trial balance. Scan toward the trial balance. You are scanning for two items. One, usual. And two, unusual. That's all. Usual item, move on. Some of the items that we are going to solve in our class, you meet the same thing as them. Some of the figures, some of the transactions, sales, you meet the same thing there. Then I don't need to think about it again. Just move on. Unusual. Definitely, you have to see some stars in the exam paper. Something I've not met before. So what do you do? Use please up to 30 seconds to make decision. 30 seconds. Whether it to be asset or liability or equity or revenue, if it's in a trial balance. Something new, if not seen before. Whether it to be expense, revenue, trap, um, early bullet, capital equity, you are done. Then, Start work. So that is so before you start work, at least you scan to the trial balance, you scan to all the footnotes, and after the footnote, definitely some of them you may not be able to solve it. It's not compulsory to solve all of them. So out of the seven footnotes, you can do five. It's okay. Just go straight and do the five that you can do and then move on with the with the remaining two. After the pass mark is what 50. So what 50 
can you? But what 99 can you? 50 can also do. If, in fact, even better square. Attach to it. After you pass, the one right of four, this one called for 50 marks. This one called for 99. Let's go for 99 something and No. The strategy you have to use to pass the paper. That is it. When you do this, at least you go straight to what you know. Present it there. The, those that you don't know, leave it. For the examiner coming, and continue for you. Yes. So that is it. So apply these concepts from henceforth. Any question that we solve, we are we've now started financial reporting. So from here, for any person that we solve, that won't go by the rat or the rough principle. Good. So that is it. So let's go and then pick our first illustration. Now we are looking at the 2019 November past question. Good. So as the requirement states, required, prepare for big is limited, right? Oh, big is limited. That's Mr. Big at circle, right? No there. Hmm? <laughs> Collapsing. The statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended 31st December 2018. And the statement of financial position as of 31st December 2018. Eight marks and eight marks. Good. So that is it. Now let's see. So first, we are going to the footnote one after the other. Now be with me as we are reading the footnote. When you are reading the footnote, for the first time, you are just identifying two issues. The item that will affect, and then the impact. So the item that will affect. So if you read the footnote one, what will it um, affect in the financial statement? So let's see, note one. Or additional information, note one, the current value of the inventories at a cost at 31st December 2018 was 39.1 million. Good. So this will be the closing inventory. Now, when they give you the closing inventory in the footnote, it means that the open inventory is in a trial balance or the purchases in a trial balance. Good. Now, let's go and see if purchases is there. There's no purchases. Shy, trouble. Instead, we have what? Production cost. There is a manufacturer. So, production was cost. So, that's the purchases. And there must be open inventory. Yes, this is the open inventory. So open inventory plus the production cost less the closing inventory. If there's any other direct cost, you add. If there's no other direct cost, you are down on the cost of sales. And that is the end of the game. So note one is cleared. And when you go to your financial position, the inventory figure will be what? 39.5 million. You are done. Basically. That is it. So basically, the cost of sales will just include the open inventory, the production cost, and closing inventory. If there's any, if there's any other direct cost, such as your depreciation written down in a question, what do you do? You just add it. We are done with the cost of sales for this question. That's all. Now let's move on with the game. So you're attacking the issues one after the other. The issues that 
pose the challenge. The issues that pose the challenge. Now let's see. Now note two. Note two states that on January 1st, 2018, Bix Limited sold some of its plants and equipment to finance to a finance company. Good. Bix Limited credited a sales proceed of 25.6 million to revenue. Wow. The plant and equipment was purchased by Bix Limited on January 2017 at a total cost of 32 million and was depreciated over its estimated life of five years. The cost of, sorry, the cost and accumulated depreciation of the disposed asset is still included in the PPE costs and accumulated depreciation accounts. Good. On January 2018, Bix Limited began to lease the plant and the equipment from the finance company on four year lease rental. So on four year lease. The lease rental were 7.2 million payable annually in advance. If Bix Limited had borrowed funds from finance company on January 2018, the annual interest rate would have been 8.5 million. So this amount to Leases that's IFRS 16. Basically, IFRS 16. Good. Great. Good. So, this suggests that first you have to do the issue one after the other. So, now they sold item of plants to a finance company and then they have credited the proceed to their sales revenue mode. So this will it amount to sales if you sell item of plants and you lease it back. This is what you call sale and what? Lease back transactions sale and lease back it is under ifra 16 sale and lease back transaction good so and lease back transaction good still and lease back transaction so the revenue we have to take off that amount from the revenue that is it. You have to take that amount from revenue. So that we are not going to classify that as sales. No. So sale and lease back. This is sale and lease back under what? Under finance lease. Here we said that there's no sale. Yes. Good. There's no sale. So if they have included that figure in their sales, what do we do? We take it off, right? So first, when you pick the sales revenue from the trial balance, you just have to take 25.6 million from that figure. So 25.6 million must be debited to sales. So take it off from sales, how we get it. So that is it. Then when you are done, you have to calculate the profit and loss. We call it the notional gain. And then you amortize it and over the list term of the assets. And now you fully usher the assets into 
the leasing structure. Good. So the latter part of it, that's from here, where I've highlighted going down up to the, the percentage. That's where we will start calculating the lease. And the payments are in advance. So in advance, you have to calculate your finance what cost on the lease. So the finance cost on the lease will form part of all the interest expense or the finance cost in your profit and loss account. Good. So that's the end of note two. So in summary, in note two, 25.6 million must be taken off from where? From the revenue because it's not a sale. Then second, you perform calculations on leases, you are done. So even if you cannot do the leases, not a 25 to 6 million, taking it from the sales revenue. Good. And then that is it. Note, note three. Note three states that So all the footnotes try and identify what item will it affect and what item not affect. Note three, we are done with note three. That's financial instruments. So for note three, but you explain to me how you're going to treat it. On January 1st, 2018, that's the beginning of the financial year or the beginning of the reporting year, Bix Limited issued 200 million treffen shares at what? 32 cities, 50 pesos each. Cost of issue were 1 million. That's transaction cost, right? Or issue cost. How do you treat transaction cost in financial instruments? If it's a financial asset, how do you treat it? If it's a financial liability, how do you treat it? That's what they're asking you here. Good. Then, so the net proceed of the issue were 64 million Ghana cities. You can calculate it. Now multiply 32.5 by 200. Now the 32, it supposed to be 3.25 because 32, 0.5 pesos, not 32 cities. So, how do you guys? So, it's 32.5 pesos. So, to be mm. so, how do you convert 32 pesos into cities? That is 0 0.325. Agree. So, let's go to the board. Now, let's go to the board. Perform this calculation. So well, let's go to the board. So it means that the 200 million shares will multiply 0 0.325 like this. We say 32.5p, not k, or not cd, not 32 cities. It's 32 pesos. What do you get? Good. So that's 65 million. So Ghana city of 65 million. And as a transaction cost, right? This is a this, this will it be a financial liability or financial asset? Let's read further. If it's a financial liability, what do you do to a transaction cost? You do what? Paper jam. The paper jam. Financial assets if it's a transaction cost, you add. For financial liability, you subtract. Are going for a loan and you incur cost, the net amount you receive. But the examiner did it for us. So let's see if this is a financial liability or a financial asset. Cost of issue were 1 million. So the net proceeds of the issue were 64 million. So they fully subtracted it for us. 64 million. The preferences. The preference holder will receive an annual dividend 
on 31st December each year of what? 3.9 million. The shares will be redeemed at par on 31st December 2022. It will be redeemed. So that's what? Redeemable preference shares. And redeemable preference shares are what? Are they equity? Are they financial equity or they are financial assets? In fact, they are what? Financial liability. I'll take that. You will not mention it. So they are financial what? liability. In fact, you know the game, right? Yes. I'm here to cause confusion and to resolve it back again. So this is a financial liability. If the preference sheds, they are redeemable, then it must be classified as what? Liability and it's financial liability. Good. The effective annual finance cost attached to these shares is approximately 6.4 million Ghana cities. Now, anytime the examiner gives you the cash flow, do not give you the coupon rate or nominal rate. Yeah, the effective interest rate has been given to, to be 6.4%. The coupon rate has not been given, right? We have to give a 2 percentage, it's not always so. So therefore, they've already calculated the nominal interest or which is the dividend of 3.9 million. So the first year, it will be the nominal rate. Then you find the effective interest rate and be part of what the finance cost. So therefore, there are two finance costs. One is coming from node two, one is coming from node three. Good. And then we are done. The first annual dividend was paid on 31st December 2018 and it's included in the dividend paid. The equity shareholders were paid a dividend of 4 million each year. So let's go to the trial balance. They say there's a dividend there. So let's go. Let's go to the trial balance. So that's the first um, file, right? Good, that's the first for those using the screenshots. So let's come to the trial balance. Dividend paid, what's the figure there? You said? 7,900. It's combination of what? The preferred dividend plus what? The ordinary dividend. So what's the preferred dividend? We have to make sure that we get that 7,900. So the preferred dividend is 3.9 million, that's 3,900. And then the equity dividend is what? The 4 million, agreed. So now it has balance before we can continue. Good, so that's the combination. So in exam, if you are like getting the issues like this, then at, at least you are making a headway. So that is it. So in short, yeah, you have to calculate the, in fact, you do the calculation for me. You calculate the effective interest rate, then you calculate the closing balance, that's all. You just need the first year. You don't need the second year, third year. Even though the issue it when? 1st January 2018 up to 2022, how many years? From 1st January 2018 up to December 2022, how many years? Five years, good. So 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, making what five years. Even though this financial instrument will last for five years, we don't need to show working for all the five years, just the first year you are done. I we get it. So in the final account like this, just the first year, but if they should ask you this, the same question in question number two, or the standard on its own, they require you to do all the five years. Have you seen the difference? So over here, just the first year, first year, first year, you are don't need to show working up to the last year. So here, what you do now for me is this. You will start with first, the open balance, because I'm going to prepare a modernization schedule for me. The open balance, you tell me the effective interest rates, you tell me the coupon rates or the nominal interest and tell me the balance what carry down that's all good 
the time you try. Okay. Good. Together. So all what you have to do is maybe work in one of your workings. You call it lease. Not lease. You call it a financial instrument. That's the preference. Yes. Drug and amortization shadow. So amortization shadow. Yeah. Bring your year. What did you do again? The open balance or liability at the start of the year. That much. Open balance. And here is the effective interest rate. Effective interest rate is what? What's the percentage? 8.5, right? 6.4. Or five, so six point four percent. The nominal rate, okay, the nominal rate is going to be the same throughout. They don't have committed for you, so they're going to for you. That's the trade of nine million. They put the government for you, and it's the same throughout. So here is a balance carried on. This one goes to the financial position. This one goes to the PL now. You can go to your cash flow. That's all. So if I read cash flow too, you also see financial instruments in cash flow. Close to cash flow. So that one is cash movement. You must add it to your bank balance or cash balance. That is good. Now 2018, that's what you are looking for. So 2018, 2019, 2020. 2021 and finally 2020. You don't need all this years. Okay. 21, 22. That's a final year, right? Good. Don't need all this year. All you need is just the first year you are done. Because under the final account, we are testing you on a lot of standards. So that's not where you have to do all of them. No, not at all. Just the first year in question. You are done. The year in question. I think that the reporting year, I'm looking for a drama that will do this for me. The reporting year will last year. It will fit here. We are, maybe the reporting year is 2020, but the issue is 2018. That we have to do what I have to wear here and get the balance there, right? But here we are lucky. The first year, no, there's the reporting year. I'll be, that's what mostly. Open balance is what? That's the process. What's the process? 64. Thousand. So let's say there will be 64,000 like this, right? That's the free balance. Then the effective interest rate, 6.4% on 64,000. 4,096 like this, right? So the 65 is the nominal value or the face value or the coupon value. Then we say what to get a proceed. Financial instrument, financial liability, to get a proceed, you relax. Then you bring what? The face value, so much. Less discount, so much. Less transaction cost or issue cost, so much. In this question, the face value was 65. No discount, but there was a transaction cost or issue cost of what? One million. So the net will be 64. And if an examiner told us that even a net of 64 million, so the proceed must be what? 64. So the liability at the start of the year is 64. The only the 64. That's the liability at the start of the year. Or the proceed. How do you get it? So that's the liability at the start of the year. And that's the proceed. So 64 million must be here. Good. Just that the coupon rate, when I give you the coupon rate, it must be expressed on the face value, not the proceed. The coupon rate must be expressed on the face value. This one, because the past percentage here, normally they will give percentage. It is lower than what the 6.4. That doesn't know if maybe it was 5%. This 5% will be on the 65, not on the proceed. Good. And it's going to be the same throughout. And they had trade of nine million, right? That's three thousand nine hundred, and the same for all 
the relevant years. Agreed. Okay, so that's great. Now here will be 3,912 for all the five year period. If I don't do all, but here I don't need all. I need just the closing balance, we are done. So what do you do? The closing balance will be? So 64196. And here you don't need this table to even to get this. So you can tell the examiner that it's nothing by the 64 plus this less or this. So this one, every one of them, this one goes to the financial position as what well, as a balance. So in your financial position, when you when you're listing your liabilities, non-current liabilities, the preference share must be part of the non-current liabilities. Agreed. Why? Because this type of preference share is what is a redeemable preference share. It must be part of what the liabilities. I we get it. Good. And I figure will be what 64 for the first year. We are done. Now your homework will be when you go home, relax. Do up to the end of the year for me. That's all. End of the the, the instrument life. Then this figure, the effective interest rate goes to your finance charge. If you are adding your finance charge, don't forget. It's one of the six items that we mentioned that the finance charge comprises of the following. It's one of them. So when you're listing your finance charge, don't forget to add this to your finance cost. So go to where? Finance cost. Okay. How we get it? Good. Basically, that's all. Then we are done. So at least, even if they are uh, difficult notes, maybe some moderate one. I made my statement by saying that where there is a difficult king, definitely there will be some one person easy under him. That two that person can get that difficult king. Yeah. In every exam, definitely some of the notes will be difficult. Some of them to be easy. Go for the easy one, that's all. Difficult one, leave it for the examiner. Yes, why don't you answer the question? And after the past, Math is what? 50. So what's the worry now? Make sure that we do most of the entries. Well done. Now let's move on eh, to the next of the notes. So I'm explaining the notes one after the other. So that when you go home, you sit down, you articulate and consolidate. <laughs> and you prepare and present. <laughs> then you put them together for me. Good. So that's note three. Now let's go to note four. Note four. Note four to your down with it. That's IS 12. So for that one, you can do. Wow. So that's good news. So at least this question, the only note that you cannot do fully was the least. Good. Now let's see. The estimated income tax on profit for the year, December 2018, is 4.5 million. What is that? That's a C, right? Current year tax provision. Put it there. Once in the footnote, it will also appear where the financial position has got current liability and then two treatments. You are done. The next one. During the year, 4.2 million was paid in full and final settlement of income tax on profit for the year ended 31st December 2017. The statement of financial position. At the first December 2017, had included 4.4 million in respect of liability at the first December 2018. The current amount, sorry. So, yeah, it will amount to what? Under or what? Over tax provision, right? So, you calculate, will it be under or over? Then you are under. Okay. Say under. Any different answer? Here, yeah, you compare two items together. First, Tell me first, tell me the tax provided. First, tell me the tax provided. Second, tell me the tax paid or final tax agreed. So, tax provided 
and tax final tax. That's all. If what you provided more than the final, you've got over provided or under. Mm -hmm. So which one is the final tax? Let's go to the question again and pick the issues. So now let's see. Don't they hear four or two million was paid in four? Four and final. I can see final there. So the final tax is what? Four or two. So final is four or two. Then the tax provided is what? The tax provided is what? It's four dot four. They're looking for the tax provision. They're looking for the under or the over tax provision. We said that the under or the over tax, we have to pick all the details from the preceding year or the past year. So are you concerned what the 2017 tax? With the under or the over tax provision, we are just looking for the previous year. So I need if I'm 2018, I need 2017 tax provided. And I need 2017 final tax as well. That's all. So under over tax look back just last year. What was the tax provided? What was the tax primarily agreed on tax authorities books? That's all. Find the difference. That is the under or the over tax provision. It has nothing to do with this year's tax. This year starts to be either we see the word for the year or 2018 in it. See that this word for the year. So tax provision for this year is this. That's the C. Or tax provision for 2018. When they mention year, then quickly go to the the, the year in question. So let's check this. The 4.5 million, they stated it as what? Current year. So estimated income tax on profit for the year to 31st December 2018. That's what the current year. I will get it. Good. 4.5 million. And the under over last year. Thank you. So I always under or over relate to last year because you cannot confirm this year's tax because you are now preparing the financial statement. So to be confirmed when next year in that order. So if I want to calculate the under over. All the tax information must be what the last year. So pick last year's tax provided and the final tax agreed with the tax authorities. That's all. Yes. Whatever the tax authority will agree on, that's what you have to pay. So you compare the four point four to four point. That's all. So the tax provided is 4.4. And then provision will be on the balance sheet as a liability, because that's what you provided. And that's a liability, all provisions are liability. So the examiner was saying that it was provided and it was being included in where their financial position as liability. That suggests it's the tax provision, right? How we get it? Good. So provision is 4.4. And then the final one is 4.2. So 4.4. So the tax has been what? Over provided, right? Yes, you provided more than you're supposed to. So over, I read. Over by no, no, two. that's 200, right? Now let's go to the trial balance. It will appear on the trial balance. Let's go to the trial balance. It will appear there. And you quickly relate it. If you see current year tax or tax stand on its own, it represents what? Under over the trial balance. If this is just tax or current tax, stand on its own. If it's a debit, it's under. If it's a credit, it's what? Over. That's all. So locate it for me. So you have to see 200 somewhere at the credit. So where is it? 200. Have you seen it? So 200, which is what? At the credit, which represents what? Over tax provision. That's all. So even you can just pick it from here over tax provision that won't do those calculations so just to explain how this one was arrived at how we get it good
So over tax, what do you do? Do you add or you subtract? So over. Over you subtract, right? So C will be 4.5 million O over 0 0.2. Then let me defer tax there. Then you continue the game. Have you seen how nice it is? So it's not something which is too hundreds, no. Now let's move on. So I'm going to explain all the issues one after the other. So that when you are solving it, you can play about it. If I solve it, you are not there. You say, no. All this will not come out. So make sure that you understand every note. No, now in class. By this time, you know. Now, the last item. They are saying that the statement of the financial. I think I sit in 2 2. Hmm. At the December 2018, the current amount of net assets of Bix Limited exceeds their tax base by. 35.8 million. I assume an income tax rate of what? 25%. You are done. That's all. So that's a deferred tax calculation. So you calculate the deferred tax and tell whether it's taxable or what? Deductible. Whether it be a non current tax or non current liability. So the deferred tax balance, the closing balance. Mm -hmm. What do you get? Mm -hmm. BS That's 35.8 times what? 25%. That's a closing balance. 8.95. Perfect. 8.95. Will it be taxable or? Or deductible? Mm -hmm. Which one is um, higher? There are two items, current amount and the tax base. So here is the current amount higher or the tax rate was higher, according to the statement. The current amount exceeds the tax base, so the current amount is what higher. And if the current amount is higher, what do you call it? Taxable. So this is a taxable temporary difference. So therefore, it's a great what you call non-current liability. So that's deferred tax liability. Okay. Yes. So in a balance sheet, the answer that you had, that's the 25% times the 35.8 becomes the closing balance of the deferred tax. And you carry to the financial position as well to non-carrying liability. Why? Because the deferred tax, sorry, the temporary difference that resulted in the deferred tax is what taxable. And therefore, it's non-carrying liability. You are done. All of them, in fact, in fact, if you go to the exams and then you are you are confused, eh? just put them at the non care level. Now we said that there are two things. For the fair tax, you compare two items, carrying amount and what tax base. If the carrying amount is more than the tax base, it will create what you call taxable temporal difference, and it's what non care liability. That's all. If it's the other you run, it will be what you call deductible temporal difference. And now it's what non current asset. So we call it deferred tax asset. Okay. If you go to exam, then you're convinced most of the exam questions is non current liability. So then you have to decide whether it's non current liability or non current asset. Just put it there and then you are done. Good. And make sure that it's taxable. Okay. Yes, we will, we will cover everything. So therefore, and that one too, we have to compare the open balance. So to summarize the income tax for this question, we have C and O. So 4,500 O or 4,200, you subtract, let me defer tax. You pause, come and do working. So come here. Tell the examiner that the fair tax is nothing by the open balance. 
Open balance will be in the dry balance. You go to the dry balance and pick the open balance versus the closing balance. And the closing balance is what we calculated. That's the 25% times the 35.8. That'll give us 8590, right? 8.95. So 950. I've read a thousand here. So to be 8,950. Good. Now let's go to the trial balance to bring the open balance of the deferred tax. In the trial balance, the open balance of the deferred tax will be deferred taxes here. That's 8,000 agreed. So you come here and then record 8,000. So what's the difference? 950. So this one, tell the examiner that this one goes to the PML before the specific session, the income tax. So this is the figure I'm going to record here, 950. You put it together like this, and this becomes, you sum all of them up, and as the income tax expense, you send to the PML. So in your PML, send the total of this. Now this one goes to the financial position as a non current liability. This one goes to the financial position as well, non current liability, because the temporal difference, the current liability is the current year tax, and the non current is the deferred tax, because the temporal difference was well taxable, and it ends there. So the entire note is what we've done here. The entire note is what we've done here. The entire taxation note is what we've done here. How do we get it? Good. So basically, that is it. Now let's continue the game. We're explaining all the issues so that when you are burying it. Yes, please. Okay, now let's go to the next note. Note five. Note five. The details of property plans and agreement as follows, so PP is the other. They have given us the cost of the assets, accumulated depreciation, current amount. You know, land is there. Not that we don't depreciate land, right? We don't depreciate land. Why? You can tell me the reason. Don't say that land appreciates. Land has no lose value. No. Go to Choco. And tell me that Choco land, <laughs> they have appreciated. <laughs> and then <laughs> go to this level, compare this level land and compare chocolate land. And then compare land that contain gold and tell me that this land will appreciate. Go to Obuasi and Taka. If we over extract this gold, the land will even lose it what it value. Good. So why? The reason is this land does not have what active or definite is for life. So on what years are you going to depreciate the land? Not at all. So that's why we don't depreciate the land. Instead, it's just for impairment. All assets that do not have an active life, you don't depreciate them. It's just for impairment annually. Whether that asset has been impaired, good. So that is, let me give a classical example. If you acquire any person, okay, so you can see them there. Land is there, 32 building, Plant and equipment 37, and then those stuffs. Current amount, you know how they got the current amount, right? Cost minus what the accumulated depreciation. Estimated to life or the economic life at the date of purchase. Land, indefinite. Have you seen the nail? That's why we don't depreciate land. You cannot tell me your land will survive for 10 years. You die in land will grow. Yes. The one that decided uh, this land will last for five years. But however, take note, there are a special type of land that we depreciate. What type of land? We call it leasehold land. Freehold land, we don't depreciate them. But leasehold land, we depreciate leasehold land. The land that you have leased or rented it for some period of time, that one can be depreciated. Why? We are going to use it for some time. It will not be with you forever. Uh -huh. Good. Now let's move on. Now let's watch this. That's the last footnote too. 
On 30th June, something happened. 2018, the director decided to sell the property because more suitable leasehold property had become available at a very competitive cost. They advertised their property for sale at that date at what was considered to be a realistic accent price of 68 million. Wow. What's the BP? What's the current amount of the BP? 57.72 million. That's the current amount of the BP. But it was what? It was priced at was 68 million. Okay. And then the DM as what? Realistic. The estimated, sorry, they estimated that cost of three million would be necessary in order to sell the property. On December 2018, they reduced the action price to what 64.5 million and sold the property at this price shortly after the year end. Cost to sell, totaling 2.5 million. This is IFRS World 5, head for sale. The one that you have to do it. Good. So that is it. How do you account for such transaction? Good. This is health for sale. Just that finally, Finally, or it's shortly after the year end, it was what disposed of. Good. So, how do you account for such transaction in the book? Good. So how do you treat such a transaction? And then you are fine. That will be our last transaction for the day. Then the rest, you have to work articulate because we've done everything except the lease. You have to articulate everything together. All these adjustments, just put them together. I know that if I leave the trial balance alone for you, you can solve and finish everything. It means a few times. Is a footnote that is causing the issue. Good. So, how do you treat this? Good. So, now this is the asset held for sale. And then, this you have to find the current amount of the assets. How do you get a current amount of the assets? And that's what we have to key it in in what the financial statement, the current amount. So the current amount is equal to what? The cost of the asset less any what? Depreciation, right? Accumulated depreciation. Good. So basically, that is what we are going to do. Good. Now we have to calculate the depreciation. Depreciation. Now how are we going to calculate the depreciation? When did they classify the asset? What was the date? They classified it when? So first, calculate the depreciation on that asset for me. The depreciation for that asset will be, that's a property. That's a property. What will be the depreciation on the property? And depreciation, we have to, Calculate it up to the date of what the classification because asset held for sale are not supposed to be what depreciated. That's all. You see, depreciating it, how we get it. Yes, so that is it. So, depreciation must be up to when June, right? Until first June. So, first June, how many months? First June, how many months? 
fashion will be how many months? Mm -hmm. Good. Hey, who's that fashion? So it's 30 of June, so six months, right? Yeah, so six month division must be added to that of the depreciation. So now let's cover the six month depreciation first on the asset. So what's the original cost of the property? The original cost of the property is what? 87,000 agreed or 87 million. That's the original cost of the plant, 87 million. Then you depreciate it for just six months. So what will the depreciation for six months? Depreciation for six months. Try and calculate some, okay? Yes, try and calculate some for me. Mm -hmm. Now it was the in fact which of the property in fact it should be the building. Good. So six months of that will be six months of that. So full year depreciation and take six out of what? So from it, six out of twelve. So that is it. Will it be on the building, or it will be on the on the plant and equipment? So it's property, right? And yeah, it is a property plan that we went to. So they said property. So which of these three assets is called property? Mm. As the building, we don't depreciate what land. So to be just the building, so 38,000. And the building lasts for many years? 50 years, right? So 38,000 divided by 50. And then divided by times what? Six out of 12. And now give us what? 380. So that's a depreciation on the held for sale assets. The first six month depreciation. That's the first recalculate. And now we to form part of the depreciation. To form part of the depreciation. That's a 380. So if I want to calculate all the depreciation, then we can cal calculate towards the property plant and equipment. And then the lease plant, we sum them up and then we are done. Now let's continue the game with the head for sale. Now we know the depreciation, which is 380, right? Good. No depreciation is 380. Now we should find the current amount of the assets. At the date, at the date of what the classification, so you can do that for me. Yes, find the current amount of the building at the date of what all the property. But here, in adding, you add a land to it, as she said, that contain land and building. Just like in calculation of the depreciation, we just exclude the land. So, you calculate the current amount of the entire property. For me, how do you get the current amount? Pick the entire cost of the property. So add the cost of the land, add the cost of the building together, then relax. To get the current amount is cost minus what? The accumulated depreciation. So get the accumulated depreciation at the date of what? The classification. The accumulated depreciation given to us in the question, this 
9120 as at the beginning of the year. It excludes what the 380 that you've calculated, right? Are we getting it? It excludes the 380 that you've calculated because this figure, this 39120, is 31st December 2017, which is same as what? 1st January. But we classify it when? June. You have to now find six month depreciation and take it off. And that's what you've calculated. So therefore, what will be the current amount of the property? It will be that 6,500. Wow, we are done, that's all. That's the current amount of the property. Then you compare this to the classification amount or the fair value. The fair value, good. So 6,500. Good. So the current amount of the assets at the date of classification is 6,500. 6,500. Good. So basically, that is it. Now let's look at the last section of it. Now, what's the fair value of the, the asset classified? The fair value is what? Good. Now, let's see how we got the 6,500. So, the 6,500, we arrived or we calculated by picking first the cost of the property. What's the cost of the property? Land, 32. Building is what? 38, right? Now I'll give you 60, uh, 70,000, right? Agreed. Then accumulated depreciation. That one to we third examiner that there was 9120. We take it off. I also take the charge for the year. The charge for the year. The 380 that we calculated by ourselves, right? So this one give us the 6,500. So this is how we arrive at the 6,500. That's the current amount of what? Of the instrument. The instrument, that's the non-current asset held for sale. Now we just have to compare the current amount of this instrument to that of the fair value less cost to sell. So let's calculate the fair value less cost to sell. How do you calculate the fair value less cost to sell? What's the fair value of the non current asset held for sale? Is there any fair value given to us? Let's go to the question. Is what fair value of the asset is sixty four thousand five hundred. We're looking for it as at the last measurement date. So it's sixty four thousand five hundred less cost to sell. What's the cost to sell? Two point five million. So what would be the fair value less cost to sell? Sixty two. Good. So let's go to the board. So therefore. Is the current amount now? If I got that with health for sale, health for sale, you compare the current amount to that of what the federal less cost to sell. Good, just that we don't depreciate that asset, you only depreciate from that time up to the classification date. From the classification date going, no depreciation, and then in that order. Good, so fair value less. Cost to sell will be, in fact, we can sell like this fair value 64,500. And then the cost to sell 2,500. So therefore, here's 62,000. So what do we do? What to be the decision rule? Now we just have to tell the examiner that since the current amount is less than what? fair value, less cost to sell, then the asset will be included in the state of financial position at its worth 
current amount. You have to choose the lower. That's all. So select the word, the lower. Now, head for sell assets are like inventory. They are like what? How do you measure inventory? That's all. So it's my. Is that? It will be included in the financial position, like your assets. You add it to your assets. Yeah, you add it to your asset. That's my current asset held for sale. Yes. Yes. Classify separately on its own. Held for sale. It's not be PP. It's on its own. Like after the PP, intangibles, investment property, held for sale. I have love for sale financial assets. That's all. In what word? Sixty. 500 I forget it. What if the fair value cost to sell is a lower? Even that one, then that means you have to what, reduce the current amount to the so any loss must charge to the profit and loss as well as an expense. Call it implicit impairment. That's what has been paid. The same as inventory. That that is not written down. Inventory must be written down. Okay. Good. So basically, that is it. And that's the end of the last footnote. Yes, and that's the end of today's section. On that note, we've successfully gone through all the footnotes, one after the other, except the reasons. So what you have to do is you have to now sit down, articulate them, prepare the, the financial statement for me, so that I pick it up. On Wednesday, we look at our last final questions. We are now in the first and last account. As usual, these sections are what hit and go. Yes, that is it. If you do have any questions, you kindly ask before we close this chapter of today's edition. So thank you very much for coming once again. Good.